We are back for another recon, and this time we're in Scotland on one of the best courses on the Zwift platform. And yes, it's the Muckle Yin route for stage five, a segment packed points race. Let's get in to this week's recon. So this is it, the final points race of round two of the ZRL. As mentioned, it's one lap of the Muckle Yin for 23.7 kilometers and 280 meters of elevation. But the headline is the fact we have seven segments for chasing those FTS and FAL points, leaving whoever is left after this epic battle to fight it out for finish line points, which in itself has FAL and FTS points available. However, I don't expect too many FTS points on the second time of asking for the champion's sprint. Anyway, let's get straight in and look at these recon notes, which has distance markers and banner markers for all segments and power up points of which there are nine in total and each one with a different power up and each one should and could be effective on the preceding points segment. You'll see what I mean when we get on course and when we look at these recon notes. Okay, so this is a constantly rolling course and bike choice offers an interesting dilemma. For me, I'm lucky enough to have the Tron bike. So if you have it, I think that is the choice. It's the right balance with speed and climbing ability with its weight for this particular route. However, if you're chasing segments for FTS, then think about either something a little more aero for the sprints, maybe even something like the Scott Addict RC paired with disc wheels is also not a bad option, providing you can survive the onslaught, which will likely come on both sides of that skur climb. Okay, so what about these power-ups? As mentioned, you are going to be picking up different power-ups which could be used for the segment which comes next. So, as an example, we hit the champion sprint straight out of the pen at the sprint banner. We then pick up a draft power-up. We then, at kilometer three, pick up a feather at the lap banner which could be used effectively on the breakaway break. At the top of the breakaway break, you're gonna be getting a steamroller if you already used your feather. Both of these power-ups could be used on the Skur Summit North Climb, which as we know, is a gravel climb. So something to think about there tactically. Interestingly, at the top of the Skur, you then pick up an anvil. Absolutely use this on the descent if you've created some gaps or closing gaps on the descent. Riders can move away very quickly with an anvil on that descent. Anyway, you get the idea and all these power-ups are listed on the recon notes, which of course are available by following the link in the description to the community pages of levelvelo.cc. Whilst you're over there, why not check out some of the awesome indoor cycling shorts and jerseys available? Or ask the team at Level Velo about producing your team's kit via our custom kit program. Zero minimum order quantity or value on any custom team kits. Also, if you're enjoying this video and content, please consider subscribing to the channel and go ahead and like this video. And why not join in the conversation in the comments section below? I love reading the comments, your insights and so on, and joining in that chat. Okay, so we've done the bike choice. We've done the power-ups. I think it's time we get in the pens and take a look at this course. The footage from today's race is actually from an 8v8 race we did as part of the Ladder League, which is absolutely awesome, and you should go and check out that Ladder League. Also, I highly suggest to go and check out the full video footage over on the Squirrels YouTube channel after this recon. David Squirrel was DSing his dirt team against our level racing team, and the Squirrel is one of the best Zwifters in terms of tactics and Zwiftcraft on the platform and Squirrel makes some great comments and observations about the course in his video. It's also interesting to hear one of their riders say, whatever you do, don't let Cy win. But I'm not gonna dwell on that too much. Anyway, there's a link in the description below. Okay, finally, we're in the pens and we're ready to roll. As mentioned, we're gonna leave the pens and straight away, we're heading towards the champion sprint for first across the line and the fastest through segment points. So this 
start is going to be absolutely rapid. Surf those wheels and do what you need to do, dependent on if you're going for FTS or FAL points. After the sprint, you're going to pick up a draft van and I expect the tempo should settle pretty quickly after that frantic start as riders want to focus on those segments. Just remember, even in between these segments in Scotland, it's always rolling, so watch for moves and stay focused throughout. A kilometre three, we'll go through the lap banner and pick up the feather power up, which as mentioned, you could choose to use on either the Castle Corkscrew Climb or the Breakaway Bray segment. I have marked the Castle Corkscrew Climb on the recon notes also as a point of interest, just in case some moves are tried at this point. That will come at kilometre 4.4. We then head towards the Breakaway Bray, which starts at 5.6 kilometres. This is a short, punchy 450 metre kick, as it an average gradient of 2.2. Of course, this has FTS and FAL points available. So if you're going for points here, use that power up. After the Bray, it's 2.5 kilometres of rolling roads as we work our way towards the Skirt Summit North climb segment. The Skirt Summit North is a 1.6 kilometres of dirt climbing and either the Feather or the Steamroller can be an effective power-up on this segment. What I will say is keep your eye out for the middle section of this climb, which flattens off and does offer some relief if you can position well in the draft and save those beans for the final constant push to the summit. Again, this is all about FTS and FAL points. Once at the top, you're gonna to collect that anvil, and again, I would say you're likely gonna to want to use that on the descent. I say that because once you're at the bottom of the other side, you're gonna turn right and head back under that lap banner again to collect a feather, which again is gonna be useful on the Castle Corkscrew or the Breakaway Bray forward. All right, Breakaway Bray forward is a 600 meter punchy little segment for FAL and FTS points. I expect the group has probably reduced at this point. So those riders not in the front group, there may still be some opportunities for fastest through points for those riders saving themselves to assist the team with those points. You know what I mean. Okay, so at this banner, it's another steamroller offering an interesting dilemma again. I say that because the only useful place for that steamroller is really the descent off the next skur climb. So some things to think about and discuss with your team and which and when to use those power-ups. However, before you get to the skur north side, which is a tarmac road, you will again go through that lap banner and collect a feather if you don't already have a power-up, of course. So maybe some will choose to bin the steamroller and take the feather for the climb. Maybe some riders ignore the feather, keep the steamroller and use it on the descent. So many decisions to be made on this route. At the top of the skur segment, which is gonna start at kilometer 18 and finish at kilometer 19, you're gonna be chasing those FAL and FTA points. Once again, of course, you're gonna collect an anvil. So for me, I would be taking the feather at the lap banner we just passed, using it on the climb, and then using the anvil on the dirt descent. Once we've descended down the skur south, it's time to head into the city and the final two segments and the finish line. Once we're in the city, it's the Clyde Kicker, which we all know well because we've done it numerous times already just a few weeks ago. Again, it's probably gonna be a small group at this point of the race, so maybe opportunities to break things down even further, but it's segment points to be chasing again with FEL and FGS points on this punchy two-stage kicker that we know well. It's then a descent off the other side, which I believe Dave Towell now has named the Clyde Slide. So let's just roll with that for now. Just make sure side doesn't win. <laughs> Who wants to lead out? I'll try. And then it's time for the finishing sprint on the Champions Sprint segment. Go long, go short, it's up to you. Many variations have been tried and tested on this finish. But as you pick up an aero power-up at the top of the quad kicker, it promises to be fast and furious, but on tired legs. Wow, so that's it. What a course. And with some decisions to be made in terms of team tactics, with so many variations of segments and power-ups, which rely on skill and timing and not pure luck, which is a great thing 
for ZRL Racing. I know this has been a long one. I hope it's been useful for you. Don't forget to check out the recon notes. Go and check out the ride and ride the course. Like, subscribe, leave your comments and chat down in the description below. And I'll see you soon for another Zwift Racing League recon. Oh, <laughs>